Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today's topics are building your first rocket, tricks to unlock science fast, survive atmospheric re-entry, and how to commit fraud for money, 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 money. Part 1. Rocket Design At this stage, we lack the technological level for liquid fuel rockets in separator rings, so we are relying on stacked solid rocket engines that destroy the expired stages with their exhaust flames. By design, this rocket is aerodynamically stable across each of the stages except for two, the first and the last stage. Because it's early in career, the game does not allow more than 30 parts per craft, so we cannot put our fins on these stages, meaning that the first stage will be unstable, however the low airspeed of takeoff will not be enough to flip over the rocket. The final stage also lacks fins, but for a different purpose. This to ensure that in re-entry from space the craft will enter tail first instead of nose first, because this will allow it to slow down enough and then glide like a Walmart space shuttle. It's important to include four mystery goos, and they must be located near the rear of the fuselage near the engine nozzle. This will ensure that our center of mass shown in yellow is where it should be in respect to the center of lift in blue. This configuration determines that the craft will fall into the atmosphere tail first as intended. Part 2. The Ascent We start by collecting science on the launch pad from our three main sources of data, the EVA report, the crew report and the science mystery goos. At this point astronauts cannot EVA in flight, so we will fire the engines and open our hatch at the same time to allow gathering a low atmosphere EVA report. As we progress, make sure to keep your ballistic trajectory 2 to 4 degrees east, because this allows to naturally land back to the KSC in spite of the Coriolis effect. For example, if you were firing at exactly 90 degrees up, you would happen to land slightly west of your starting point. This is not ideal. During the ascent, remember to pre-ignite each stage just a few seconds before the previous is depleted. This allows the upper one to destroy the previous with its exhaust flames. Make sure to collect the mystery goo report from the launch pad, the lower and the upper atmosphere and space above 70 kilometers. Now that the second last stage is exhausted, we wait until we cross the 20 kilometer altitude boundary before igniting the last one, or the thicker air will cause a flip over. You might want to switch to precise input controls using caps lock, or simply use the reaction wheel torque limiter. As we approach the Kármán line, we can play our first trick up of our sleeve. But before we continue, because Career in KSP is the most challenging game mode, players have always been setting crazier records. This has motivated me to want to set a new record for the lowest number of flights needed to complete the entire stock plus DLC tech tree. This means collecting. 18,468 science points. In particular, I want to complete the Kerbal Space Program in three flights. <laughs> the one you're watching today counts as first. Now back to our mission. Part 4. The Spacewalk. We have arrived in space. Now quickly switch back to the KSC. Here you want to use the funds obtained by launching this mission to upgrade the astronaut complex. This will allow you to perform spacewalks and gather more science. With the trick, you're now able to collect and restore science mystery goos, but also take data of crew reports from your cabin into your pockets, so to speak. Now if you build the capsule again, you can run another crew report. With the simple trick, you can collect crew report in each biome and flight situation you're in. Just make sure you're using a scientist for this flight or you will not be able to restore the mystery goose science modules. Piloting with a scientist is a little trickier than with a pilot. Part 5. Descent. We are now re-entering the upper atmosphere. Run a crew report, exit the ship, collect the data and perform an EVA report. Quickly board the ship now or you might roast in the atmosphere. Now you need to prepare for the semi-controlled re-entry into Kerbin. So limit the torque to about 30% and keep your nose pointed horizontally to help reduce your airspeed. Now you have to start flying like a space plane, which is as graceful as a chicken trying to fly. Due to the aerodynamic instability of this design, below Mach 2 you should be able to maneuver the craft like a butchered glider. Nose or tail first work the same way because we lack a rudder surface. When you reach a comfortably close distance, to your home base, deploy the parachute and prepare for landing. Ground operations. The journey is far from over. We have now to collect crew, EVA and mystery goose science reports from each of the 10 biomes of the KSC. This process can be lengthy depending on how far you land, but keep in mind that Bob Kerman is an absolute strongman giga chat. 
Despite being the size of a human toddler, this weightlifting champion is able to roll a spacecraft of several tons better than Snoop Dogg rolls his J's. In this process, I discovered two very important lessons. Always, and I repeat, always, quick save. Sometimes when I boarded the module, it just randomly exploded. <laughs> also, there are two sort of hidden extra biomes, the crawler way and the KC in general. You can access them in these particular areas shown on the map. During this mission, I also went to the sea to gather some additional signs, resulting in a total of 180 science points gathered in our first mission. I call this great success. After doing this, I realized that you can also gather an additional 6.4 science points per each of these four additional buildings by running the same reports when directly touching the tracking station building, the two sets of buildings in the research and development, and in the VAB building itself. This would have yielded an additional 25.6 science points, so it is possible to gather somewhere around 200 science points if you really persevere. Now that we have gathered enough science points to progress in our tech tree, we must make wise decisions on which nodes to unlock. These are extremely important, as they determine how capable our second rocket will be at farming tons of science points. To conclude this episode, we need to discuss about committing fraud against contractors. This concept is dead as simple, so relax. After your first mission is finished, you select exclusively contracts that pay you a bonus for simply accepting them, known as advance. For the best profit, it should be at least 30,000 credits. And by upgrading the mission control facility, we can now accept up to 7 of these in parallel. This action allows us to earn enough credits to upgrade the launch pad and the VAB. Without these particular upgrades, our second rocket would be impossible to launch due to its larger size and greater mass. The better call soul part of this fraud system I came up with is we're not going to fulfill these contracts, meaning that our space program will go in debt when these deadlines approach in a couple of months. However, I am very confident that the earnings, the milestones and the signs gathered from our second mission will offset those small annoyances. Here is the part where I challenge you and anyone daring enough to beat me at this challenge. Currently, I have finished recording the footage for my second mission based on the few parts that we managed to unlock from today's mission. I am quite confident about my results, so I have high expectations about what sort of bizarre creations you're going to design in the attempt to steal this record from me. As a final note to consider, please ensure that before you launch your first rocket, you have selected the milestone contract called Launch a First Rocket where afterwards you're not going to get offered contracts lucrative enough to do what I just showed in this video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please check out more that I have made and subscribe to find out if it's humanely possible to finish this game in just three flights. See you around and fly dangerously.